This is Levels of Geeks Podcast. Bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades. Plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now your host of Levels of Geeks Podcast, Alex and Friends. Welcome everyone to this new episode. I'm your host Alex Figueroa and that is... Nate from Netflix Reviews. Yep, and we made it to episode 7, Terminator from 1984. This is our franchise, our newest franchise. We finished the Pierce Bronson era of Bond, which you guys can check it out up on YouTube or Apple Podcasts. But before we get started, please share, like, and subscribe if you're on YouTube, if you're on listening to us on the go. Go over to Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or wherever we are listened on or whatever app you listen your podcast on. Rate us. Leave us some feedback, and we'll get back to you once we read them. Um, but yes, yes uh, Nate, Terminator. Terminator, yeah. yeah. So this is a, a franchise. So the first franchise Alex picked, uh, he, he's a big Bond fan, so he went with the Brosnan-era Bond that, that was to kick it off. This franchise was more my pick. So I have been a fan of the franchise in general. Um, also, been a while since I've seen a few of these movies, so I thought it would be a fun series to take on. So, plus, it's got Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of the, you know, all-time action stars. So, um, I mean, he's in most of them. He's the, he's only not in one of them. So, um, you know, there you go. So, we got a big action star. We got one of the most iconic franchises in general. Yeah. And uh, so, I thought it would be a fun, I thought it would be a fun, uh, you know, a fun series to go through. Yeah, it's going to be pretty fun. So, before we get into our reviews... Let us give you our criteria that we're going to be basing these uh, our ratings on. So, first things first, our Levels of Geeks criteria are, number one, lead character. Number two, main villain. Number three, action sequence. Number four, storyline. Number five, overall film. And then number six, our total points out of 25. So, again, yes. guys, if you guys want to join in on the fun, you know what to do. Leave a comment down below in the description. Let us know your ratings or what did you think of the 1984 Terminator series. So let's start it off. And you know what always kicks this off when we start this is Nate. Go ahead, Nate. Start That's it right. off with our lead character. Okay. Lead character. So um, Terminator, 1984, James Cameron. <laughs> That's your backstory. That's what, <laughs> That's what I'm giving you. That's the setup. Okay. <laughs> Sci-fi action. Okay. Lead character, Linda Hamilton is the actress. She is playing Sarah Connor in this film. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, maybe... It, I haven't seen this movie in a long time. Like this was honestly my first time watching it in years and years. Like I, it's, I can't even tell you the last time I watched it, but um, watching it, I don't know if it was because the whole time I had Terminator two in mind, which is one of my favorite movies ever mm. or what, but I think she's just okay in this. So my score for main character is a three. Um, she, wow. uh, Linda Hamilton is good. Yeah. Linda Hamilton is good. Like her acting is good. But the character is a uh, very one note in this movie. She's just a girl in danger, essentially. Um, you know, all of the story that is involved with how important she is, is stuff that's yet to come or hasn't happened because it's supposed to be in the future. You yeah. know what I mean? Because this whole movie has to do with time travel and things like that. So f- because of that, you know, it makes her it makes her important. But at the same time, I feel like in this movie, she's kind of slight. Uh, she doesn't really do much except need to be protected. And, uh, you know, that's it. That's all. That, that's pretty much her role. So for main character, I'm going to give her a three. Yeah, I mean, I'll get to overall about this film. But in terms of, uh, to me, again, Linda Hamilton, um, I did not score her like Bond where I went to the five. I didn't give her a five. I thought her character was okay. She acted great. She was a, 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 a what is it called? Like the damsel in distress, uh, uh, whatever. Damsel, yeah, damsel in distress. Yeah, yeah, that's what she was. You know, she was trying to find out who was getting killed and why they had the same name. And then she figured it out. Um, I liked it. I, I thought her character was pretty cool. Um, so I gave her a four out of a five. Okay. that's that's what, And I gave it to her because actually she was a, she did great. As the as the character, um, yeah. So I wasn't gonna give her like um, a low score. I kind of I I agree with what you're saying, but and I I know the backstory and everything, so I agree. But the first one I gave her a four because she was actually a believable 
Like she was scared of, you know, Arnold's character, T-800 or whoever he is right. going after yeah. her. So, yeah, I, I gave her a four out of a five. Um, all right. So main villain, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Look, we could, we could go on and on how great this guy. Look, he is the Terminator. Um, there was there was no flaw in him. Um, he was really good. It's, there's a lot of scenes that he was very great. Um, in terms of him in the bathroom in the in the motel, taking off the the like his arm and stuff that looked way yeah. outdated. I, I you could see it on screen how horrible it looks, and I'm not even knocking the movie on it. I'm just saying it looked horrible, especially when he popped his eye out. You could tell they put a <laughs> they put a, a, a roll. animatronic. Yeah, yeah, they put an animatronic. So I know people are gonna start writing in a thing like, "Oh, you want to speak?" It's like 1840. I understand. It's an 84 movie. Trust me, I've seen a lot of movies that I give the the pass to, and I'm gonna do the same thing with Terminator. He was a very good, believable villain. He's excellent, and you wonder why all these movies, everyone loves him as a robot. Because that's the, I mean, this dude is jacked. Yeah. I was like, I kind of forgot because now we see saggy Arnold, but I kind of forgot like his young, his young self. And why did this uh, <laughs> go off? On the screen me? went black. Yeah, the screen went black that's on the Terminator, you. dude. Yeah, you He's see, the Terminator came back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why did there you go. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Oh. You know why? Because it overheated. All right, there we go. Let's not have it plugged in. That'll be good. All right, so I'll just chop this all off. <clears throat> so, yeah, so you kind of understand why he's a believable uh, Terminator, uh, to be really yeah. honest with you. So, with that said, I gave him a five out of a five in villain. It had to be done. It, there's no way I could, I could give him a, a little score, especially in the first movie. He was just so good going into the police pre-scene and, and doing all what we're going to talk about in the next sequence. But yes, yeah. go ahead, Nate. What is your villain yeah. score? So there's two things, in my opinion, that this movie does perfectly. And one of them is the villain, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I agree. My score is a five out of five. Uh, it is the title, you know, the the lead, the name of the movie is The Terminator, and that is who he is. Yeah. First of all, pitch perfect casting, because Arnold Schwarzenegger has never been known for his acting skill. And I'm not, and it's not a knock on him. He is an action star. Absolutely. And I love a lot of his movies. But you could be a star and an action star without being a great actor as far as like craft and technique, right? Right. <laughs> but Perfect casting because of his shortcomings as an actor playing a robot. It's so easy to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He doesn't have to talk much when he does. He can be monotone, just very doesn't have to inflect, doesn't really have to do facial expressions. Um, it is perfect casting. He is. You're right. He's absolutely huge. Like when the dude walks up to the guys and he's naked in the beginning, <laughs> like he's just beefy, bro. Like he yeah. just looks absolutely jacked mm -hmm. and that scene always cracks me up because it's like these guys are talking to him like like just because he has no clothes they're talking to him like he's some punk they're bill paxton and his scrawny friends yeah and you know it's like bro i would not talk to that guy that way if he came up to me like that like he is massive so um yeah he's a killing machine uh the 10 out of 10 one of the one of the best villains period in any movie i'm calling it now i don't care Hands down, one of the coolest ideas and best executed villains in any action movie ever. So five out of five. Yeah. I mean, hey, there's no way you could give that a low. I mean, especially for this yeah. movie, maybe in the other movies that we're going to talk about. But there was yeah, no way later. you could. You, there's no way you could give this dude a lower score as, in the first movie. Um, action no. sequence. Nate, you take over. OK, so action scenes now. Um, there's some good ones in this movie. Uh, the aforementioned police station scene mm. is terrific. Like the dude shows up, he lets them know what he wants. They don't really help him. And he gives them what they deserve. Well, not what they deserve. <laughs> <but> <laughs> maybe they didn't deserve it. That didn't come you know out that I mean. way. He didn't yeah, mean it that he, way. Yeah. He gets it. He, they get what, what would happen if you, you know, denied a killing machine, uh, yeah. essentially. Um, I love that scene. I love the scene in the, uh, in the nightclub when, uh, she's oh. at tech noir and, uh, and he shows up like looking for her. Mm -hmm. It's a good tension scene, you know, like she bends down and he's looking for her. Uh, and then the, the gun he has in that, in that scene is awesome. It's like a, 
little submachine gun type gun with like a with like a laser on it. No, um, no, no. That was a that was a pistol. I thought he had that the machine gun because he shoots at he shoots at member John uh, Kyle Reese shows up and he's pff, he's shooting oh, a lot of bullets. She hit he hit the gun out when he shot him with the shotgun. Yeah, I like that gun. I like the yeah, second you gun, like the, the, the one that's like the little submachine gun. Yeah, the submachine. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that gun is sick. Um, the Uzi. and <laughs> yeah, the, the Uzi. Um, so that scene is really good. The police station scene is really good. The chase towards the end, uh, the car chase, um, was good as well. Um, so. Uh, four i give it a four long story short i give it a four um i don't think it has like as much there's some parts where you know the story kicks in and it eh, well we'll get to it when we get to storyline and uh and uh overall but um you know it, there's there's some gaps in the action and some of the action scenes are really short you know what i mean like yeah, they're just kind of yeah bang bang get them in um and it works for the movie but for action i'm gonna give it a four yeah, I mean, in terms of action, man, let me just tell you, it, it wasn't as much action in this movie. Um, when they deliver the action, they give it to you. That's what I got to say. Uh, like you said, the, the, the with the truck, I don't know why every Terminator has to have a freaking semi, a semi truck going after these it's people like or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's a staple. Um, so you got that. So I was like, all right, that's cool. Then you got the again the nightclub scene that I was like that to me that was the best part and the police station when he just walks in and he starts shooting at every cop known to man. So with that said, I mean there's nothing I could add yeah. to whatever Nate said because it's not like it was a, a full out movie action like part two when we talk about it. So with that said, action yeah. I give it a three out of a five for me. I give it a three out of a five. Okay. I don't think it was that so much the other action. Thing I, I like about like, it is. Yeah, but the other thing I like about it too that I always mark up for is it's very violent. Like it's yeah. hard, like it's bloody. It's you know he rips a dude's like heart out at the very beginning of the movie. So yeah. anytime that they're okay with using their R rating, I'm a fan. It's like yeah, you're you're gonna be rated R. You know, rip a dude's heart out, show some blood, <laughs> give me give me the goods, and they do. So that's why. Um, oh, you're well. stupid. <laughs> give me the goods. All right, storyline. Give, give me the guts. We go to storyline. All right, I'm gonna talk about the storyline. Look, the storyline yeah. is a very genetic, uh, genetic, very generic storyline. Uh, you know, they sent a protector to protect her, and then they send the villain to go after her so they could prevent. Oh, well, the Terminators are going to prevent, uh, I guess, John Connor from being born. And then, of course, they send the human to protect her so that does, you know, John Connor could be born. All right, it was cool. Uh, I was like, all right, that's a cool storyline. But honestly. There's a lot of loopholes in this movie. Like, it's such a weird story. It's a very <laughs> loophole movie. Um, so, because it's it's weird. Like, because even my wife said it. I was like, all right. So, because I haven't seen this movie in a long, and I'm going to tell you why, under overall. But I haven't seen <laughs> okay. it in a long time. So, I'm like, all right. Let's let's see why I haven't seen this in a long time. Well, I mean, if you really think about it, the Terminator getting smushed at the end of the movie kind of started the whole Skynet and the artificial intelligence, if you really think right. about it. And then Kyle Reese, or if I'm saying his name right, his name is Kyle Reese. Um, yep. Yeah. He's like, John Connor never talked about his dad. And I'm like, you, but you, you're the dad. Like and that's the thing that I'm like it, it it throws me off like a lot of loopholes here because you mean to tell me that the mom never told John about Kyle Reese and then at the end of the movie she goes oh I'm gonna tell my you know our son about you you understand that's to me that's a little loopy loopy hole because I'm like wait a minute but again that's movie man it's not real but again I, I felt like this they had a lot of loopy uh, loopholes here but. For overall, in terms of storyline, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. It was an okay. '80s movie. I thought it was it was actually a really good story for that sci-fi ish. I love sci-fi, and this gave me what I wanted: action, sci-fi. Four out of five. Okay, I'm gonna disagree with you. Um, now, I'm not gonna disagree with your score. <laughs> I'm just gonna disagree with some of your points. <laughs> so, number one, you're you're not wrong, but you are a little wrong. So, absolutely. Okay. Um, 
Yes. The when they crush the the Terminator and the arm gets stuck, of course, that is the arm that ends up showing up in Terminator 2. And that is where um Cyberdyne system, Cyberdyne, whatever, they get a hold of that arm, they ba- basically use it, um, you know, the future technology, and then that's how they're developing Skynet and all that kind of stuff. Oh, like, and the chip. One thing, yeah, the chip from from there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. From the from the crushed terminator. So one thing you got to keep in mind when watching it, and 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 I get it if so let's just say you're going into this as your only experience and you've never seen any of the other ones. Mm-hmm. It works. Um, but if you are familiar with part two, James Cameron w- ended it p- with part two. He ended it. So therefore, everything that happened in like three, four, all that kind of stuff, technically, yes, they are sequels and it continued the story, but they were not really supposed to. The way he wrote Terminator 2 and ended Terminator 2, it was supposed to end it. Absolutely. They don't show it, but Linda Hamilton's character would have told John about Kyle Reese because John Connor knows Kyle Reese is his dad. That's why he gives him the photo of the mom, because he knows he's the one who has to go back in time to meet his mom and so on and so forth. Right. He knows if I give this guy the picture, he's going to fall in love with her. He's going to go back in time. They're going to do it and I'm going to be born and so on and so forth. (laughs) Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So that's why it's not a it's not necessarily a loophole. But here's the thing. This movie and this always happens with time travel. It can always get confusing. But this is a this exists technically in a time loop. Okay, because if you think about it, uh, this happens. Right. We're in we're in 1984 time, for example. Terminator comes back. Kyrie's comes back. She gets pregnant in the future. She's going to have John Connor. John Connor's going to meet Kyle Reese. He's going to send him back. So it's just going to keep happening in the time loop, essentially. Right. And that's why Terminator 2 is so important because they were supposed to have stopped Judgment Day, which would end the time loop and all that kind of stuff. Now, obviously, we're reviewing a series that has six movies. So that didn't <laughs> that didn't happen, <laughs> yeah, which in, in, in retrospect kind of messes it up. But with that being said, a five out of five, I think it is a super uh, I don't think it's necessarily generic because at the time I don't think there was anything else like it but I do think it is basic it's basic sci-fi with a little bit of extra stuff sprinkled in but this was one of the two things I was talking about I think Arnold as the villain is a five and I think this as a storyline is a five it works perfect it's a perfect action setup someone sent back to kill someone someone sent back to protect her you don't need to know much more than that and you just go along for the ride so um yeah it's a, it's a great it's it's great for me so like i said i i don't disagree with your score because you gave it a four i gave it a five it's pretty close but um yeah I, I love the whole premise of the movie yeah um all right so let's get to the overall overall what, what okay do you give it? now overall even with the great storyline the great villain an okay me, um, main character to me honestly and okay action i'm gonna give it a four out of a five um I don't think it's it's not flawless. Obviously, there is, like you said, now these effects at the time were probably pretty cool, but yeah, definitely dated watching it now, you know, the animatronic uh, head. Uh, but that's also, a, they, they have that in a member in Total Recall when he's pulling his eye out or whatever. And, yeah. and that was like six years later. Mm-hmm. So James Cameron, say what you want about him. I'm not the hugest fan of his. Like, I'm not a fanboy of Cameron. However, I respect him, what he can do. Um, as a filmmaker with spectacle, with action, with technology. Um, he was ahead of the game. He's always been ahead of the game. And I think even with this, he was ahead of the game. Like, uh, yeah. you know, just a lot of the stuff that happens, uh, most of it looks really good besides the, you know, the, the animatronic, which is blatant. Besides that, it looks great. The action is well shot. Um, it's definitely a B movie premise. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's super efficient he directed it very efficiently it moves quick the pacing is perfect there's um even in the little lulls in action they're not very long so it's you know it's highly watchable very entertaining Kyle Reese we didn't really mention him Kyle Reese is a cool kind of secondary hero you know Michael Bean is always good so um and of course James Cameron this had all his uh a bunch of people from aliens right Lance Henriksen is in this Bill Paxton is in this Michael Bean is in this so um you know, a couple of people he'd go on to work with on his very next film, right. um, which is always cool to see. So four out of five for me. Hey, that's not bad. This is where everyone's going to hate me. This is where, where <laughs> you hate me. There's, there's a reason why I, I it, it took me a long time to watch this movie. I am not a fan of this movie. Okay. Um, and, I, and I'll explain why. Okay, I'm going to explain why. I fell asleep watching this movie. And I'm not even gonna lie. And I, I know again, the, the the reason why we do these reviews is to be 
honest. Like, I'm not going to, yeah. just because it's a popular movie, I'm not going to give it popular scores. Like, I, I sure, never sure, yeah. do that. So, I always fall asleep in this movie, and I try to find why. And today I fell asleep again, and I found out why. It's a very slow movie. Slow. It's a very slow movie. Unless you're very captivated with the story, then it I reminded did. me of Alien <laughs> 1. Like, very slow burn. Like, once, you know, Arnold does the shooting and everything, yeah, okay, cool, you know, whatever. Throughout the I slept, and I said, oh, crap. So I had to rewind the 20 minutes that I fell asleep on. And I was like, oh, man. I was like, now I kind of understand why I never see Terminator 1. Like, I never see Terminator. Like, when we watch it, I put Terminator 2, and then I'm yeah. good to go. I'm That's it. I don't need to watch any other Terminator movie ever existed. Um, But, yeah, like, I, I was really, like... And not knocking the movie. James Cameron did a great job. The actors and actresses was great. I just can't. I, it's just something about this. I, I couldn't. The, the way he told the story, I, for it wasn't for me. I was just like, holy crap. And I'm a very, and the thing is, I'm a very action person. Like, I need to have something in front of me, like a cat dangling so right. I can watch. Because if it's straight talking, I'm just going to. Like, I'm going to be sleeping. And I know I'm going to get tons of comments like, you know, you know, movies are supposed to be about story and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? John Wick didn't have that much story and we have great action from there. Um, yeah. Or Raid. Look at that Raid movie, Redemption. Like, there ain't no uh, story there. Yeah. The guy just goes straight up the, the building trying to escape. <laughs> there ain't no, yeah. no premise in that one. But with this one, um, for me, I just felt like it was very slow. So I gave it a three out of a five in overall story. Now, that's not that bad, though. Yeah, but you know what? To watch, we're going to get. Wait till we upload this. Well, I already know we're going to get those Terminator people. Like, what is wrong with you, man? Like, I already know. Like, I, I, can, I can foresee it in the future. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so, Nate, what, I, what are you going to give your overall? So, overall, tallying up my points, this comes out to a 21 out of a 25 for me. Um, the only sub four thing in it for me four out of five i mean is a uh, is a uh, sarah connor in this movie um knowing what she would become and knowing you know down the line what they would do with the character this is the least good version of her to me so besides that though i mean ahead of its time in a lot of ways a lot of the filmmaking techniques i don't feel it's slow i think it's paced exceptionally well it's under two hours um gets in gets out does its thing there's blood there's action um I love a good sci-fi story. So yeah, it's a 21. And by the way, we're going to have to do it at the end here because we didn't give the box office totals and everything like that at the top. So, um, Oh, that's we right. Gotta go into the numbers. We got to go into the numbers, but yeah, yes. my total score, 21 out of 25. Yeah. My total score of this movie is a 19 out of a 25. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, but to me, um, this is a 19 out of a 25. This is your lowest score out of anything, I think. No. Right? No. Die another day. <laughs> die another day. <laughs> That's true. Die, die another day. Die, it yeah. deserved it, though. Yeah, it, it deserves it. it. But other than that, no, no, no. This one. Look, guys, I'm not saying it's a horrible. I'm just saying it's to me, it's an average action movie. That's right. Sure. I can say. Yeah. Average action movie. But again, guys. Let's get into some box office numbers of the Terminator. Normally, I do this in the beginning, but we went right into our reviews. Um, first things first, came out in 1984. So domestic, it came out to $38 million. International, it was $40 million, So it made $2 million more overseas. And yep. worldwide, at $78 million. Eh, it's not that bad. No. You say yeah. $78 million. It's not. It's okay for 1984. Yeah. I would say, you know, adjusted for inflation, it's maybe... Honestly, maybe in the hundred million, maybe two hundred million, you know, worldwide. That's yeah. not amazing. No. It's decent, but it's crazy that it came out at that amount and then led to six, you know, a six movie franchise. Uh, they knew there was something there. Also, I think one thing we should add in, and it doesn't factor into our scores at all, but just so that people know, add in the Rotten Tomato score. This thing has a one hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. There, uh, you go. there is no bad reviews out as far as people who are, you know, Rotten Tomatoes certified reviewers or whatever a hundred percent everyone likes it so um i think we should add it in because i feel like with the bond stuff when we we gave uh um the world is not enough such a high score and like the rotten tomato score is like 52 or something like that wow. so I, I think it's cool if we disagree with the general public that they should know so 
I'm going to just claim it. Moving forward, I'll, I'll add in the Rotten Tomato score. You don't even got to look it up. 100% um, for this movie. So um, you can see the difference. I really yeah. enjoyed it. And he mostly, I mean, I would have gave it. I would have gave it. Good. Yeah, I would have gave it. A, a, like if we were doing a Rotten Tomato or whatever, I would have gave it a counted. good score. Yeah, it would have counted for, for a, a good score. Three so. out of five counts as a, a fresh review. It's just like a soft recommendation, essentially. Yeah, I mean, no, I would yeah. recommend it. If we were in the 80s, I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do this. Woo! <laughs> Terminator! But, yeah. Um, yeah, so guys, so we're going to give away the keyword now so yes. you guys can have an entry into the Rambo sweepstakes. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be giving away Rambo 1 through 5 with the extended cut. Of the of last blood. So again, the key word is something that you hear from the Terminator movie. So there's gonna be a sound coming. An actor's gonna say a line. Once you hear it, you're gonna DM me at Levels of Geeks or Nate at Nate Flix Reviews on Instagram. Yep. And then we're gonna count it as one entry. So we have six films, that's six entries if you listen to all six podcasts. This yep. keyword will not be heard. On the live stream. Well, I mean, not the live stream. It will not be heard on YouTube once I upload the video. It's only an audio. This is only a podcast giveaway. So, yep. for no further ado, when you hear someone from the movie. So, ready, Nate? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, here we go. The key word is... I'll be back. There you go. So, that's the key word. All right? So, <laughs> that, that's the key word. Once you heard it, you're going to... You can just DM us again at Nate Flix Reviews on Instagram or Level to Geeks on Instagram. So there you have it, guys. That is our review for the 1984 Terminator. Um, it was a blast. It was pretty cool. Like I said, I fell asleep watching it, but I just I rewind it and continue uh, go pushing along uh, with it. <laughs> but then again, I was tired, you know, with the damn kids. But with that said, uh, Nate, please start closing it out. Yes, so that is the that is our review again. Um, nineteen out of twenty five for Alex. Twenty one out of twenty five for me. I liked it slightly better. Um, but, but the cool thing is, there's stuff that he liked a little better, and that things that I liked a little better. So that's why we talk movies because you get the same exact movie, two different people watching it, yeah. two different perspectives, still coming to almost almost the same conclusion, uh, score wise, a little bit different in uh, what we said about it but of course we will be going uh next week we will be reviewing terminator 2 judgment day uh mm -hmm. continuing on with this franchise and the very next episode that you're going to hear later this week if you're listening to them in order is going to be 300 yeah. so that is our non uh our non franchise movie you know there's two of them you know what we said franchise three or more so um yeah. our non-franchise 300 um so keep an eye out for that one as well on um youtube if you watch the video and definitely apple Podcasts. Like you said, give us a rating, give us a review, and please put your scores in the comments. You know, people are saying, hey, great show. Love the episode. We want scores. We want to know your <laughs> take. Yes. What are your, we're giving you the criteria. Give us your numbers on those criteria. Let us know what you thought of this movie. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And again, guys, please follow us on our social media accounts. I mean, we're always posting our, our, you know, our collectible stuff. Like Nate always collects his steel books and his 4Ks and his Blu-rays. He throws them up or he's with his niece out. Lovely nieces. Right. He's out with them. Yeah. Or I put out all my my uh, my collectibles. I got statues. I got movie props. I got 4Ks. I got Blu-rays. I put them all up. All you have to do is follow us on Levels of Geeks, Instagram, or on Twitter now, Levels of Geeks, on Nate, for Nate stuff, follow Nate on Nate Flicks Reviews. There you go. There you have it. So then again, thank you guys so much for watching us on the replay on YouTube, or you guys are taking us on the go on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. I'm your host, Alex Figueroa, and that is... Nate from Nate Flicks Reviews. Yep, and be awesome to each other, and geek out. Peace.